Wow. It's got well, like the fake out ending on there. Man, this is, yeah, the, 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 like this, yeah. Everything's so hot, my God. Hey, what's um, what's happening out there? Hello? You know they can't talk back to you. Oh, geez. Hey, welcome to another live show here. <laughs> As we're getting it together here. Um, uh, welcome. Today is the 24th of March. Thank you for being here. 20 First of March. Twenty first of March. That's yeah. didn't I say that? No. It's a it's a wonderful Friday. Hope you guys are doing well. <laughs> it's a Thursday. And uh, yeah. Okay. Other than that, that <clears throat> by the way, so Wes is here working the uh, mic and the cameras. Say hi, Wes. Hi. Good. Everybody. Gail's working the live stream, and we've got sixty four viewers already. And I sure would like another chance of playing Donna Lee. <laughs> God, why did I do that? Jeez. Anyway, um, we're going to showcase some uh, two 175s today. Yeah, we don't have any guitars on the wall. What's with that, Wes? Uh, I think that's you making last-minute decisions um, all morning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We were going to do this, and then we were going to do that, and then we went back to this, and yeah. And then we're doing that. Yeah. But look at my my new background. Isn't that, didn't I get that looking good? Right oh, there. man, yeah. See that? Look at how your face is framed. I know. It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Yeah, so anyway, hope everybody's doing well. And uh, I, hi, Jim Rolfe. I see Jim Rolfe there. Yeah, we need to we need to spend some quality time on this. Well, you've audio. been saying that for weeks, and we we never do. So yeah. Okay. Next week, next week it is for sure. <laughs> so here is um, should we just well let let let's talk about what's coming up. What's coming up, Wes? Um, well, we're going to talk about that one seventy five and. We were kind of talking about, you know, is the 175 the most wanted guitar by people? I think it's the most popular jazz guitar. Yeah, and I think we say most wanted because, you know, everyone obviously wants, you know, an L5 or a Super 400 or whatever, but they, you know, they can't afford them. So, so... Uh, 175 is like, oh, I want that because I can actually afford it. You know, it's definitely more in the ballpark. Um, and there's just a ton of them out there, right? Well, yeah, they stopped making them now, so I guess. But, yeah, there is a ton of them. There, There is a lot of them. So the prices of them have been going up. Um, this one I got at our Jazz Fest from a guy that was there. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, um, mm -hmm. let's say hi to some people here. Richard Jenkins from Albert Lee. Hey! Yeah. Albert uh, Lee. Gordon's in Birmingham. The Blue Zone. Uh, Brian Bowman says, uh, let's see, another question is, when will the Gibson, when will Gibson start making the venerable ES-175 again? That's a good question. Probably never, I'm guessing. Um, Paul P-Man Howland's here. He's down in Southern California. Oh, What's going on, hey, Paul? Paul? Paul was over at the Jazz Fest. Yeah, Paul. Um, Edward Kasparik in Connecticut. Seth Waddington. What's going on, buddy? Did you see Charles Andre from Denmark? He was up there. See? Um, yeah. And James McLamara? Yeah, James Joel Henderson's you know, over Joel. in Indiana. Uh, it said Indiana, yeah. Seth Waddington's in he's a in North Dakota, South Dakota. I can't remember. Um, he's a uh, jazz guitar accelerator student, kicking butt. I hear North Dakota. Um, uh, yeah, Big Steve from Olympia, Washington. Um, 
That's Andrew nice. over in New Jersey. Mark Larkins, Mark, Northeast what's Tennessee. Happening, James McNamara. James uh, just signed up for the accelerator program, so he's getting ready to start tomorrow. And got his first session. Yeah, that's, that's... going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Lou Nordrum, I believe, is up in the Bay Area. Um, Adrian Lee, how's it going, Adrian? Totally tuberous in Massachusetts, on the road again. It's always in the house, asking questions about guitar pricing. Rich, what would you say a ballpark figure for a 1967 ES330? Oh, 67. Now that's short neck, isn't it? Or is that long neck? Um, the short necks get more. Um, so in other words, it joins the body on the short neck on the 16th fret. Uh, the long neck joins the body at the 18th. So that's way up there, you know, so you got a long neck. <clears throat> Hence the term long neck. But, uh, gee, they yeah. are all over the map on those guitars. For some reason, they've gotten real popular. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong, but uh, for some reason. But the 330 was very, uh, uh, nobody really uh, really dug that, that guitar because the volume, when you start playing at high volumes, it feeds back like crazy. So what I think is happening nowadays is everybody's not playing so damn loud. So the guitars aren't, aren't feeding back so easy, like a 330. So you could actually go out and play a 330. So I think that's possibly one thing. And, uh, you know, when, when you watch a band play nowadays, um, a lot of them are using these tiny little amps, right? And they're going through the PA and stuff. And so you don't have that really intense, loud stage volume uh, that I'm hearing anyways compared to the way, way it used to be. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, you could take a 330 and go out and play it, and it wouldn't feed back all the time, all over the place. I hope that helps. That, but, yeah, the the sixth, when it joins the body at the 16th fret, is probably the most sought after. You okay? Yeah, so uh, what, yeah, let us know what it uh, what it is there on the road again. If that's what, if it's a short neck. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, Curtis Chavez asked, how much was the last version of the ES-175? I'm not sure what your, do you mean the price? The price of the, the, the last year they made it. Mm -hmm. that, that'd be a good, maybe Sweetwater's got one. You could probably maybe look it up. And yeah. They give you a price there. Um, anyway, um Let's see. Todd Richmond said that was Donna's sister, Doris Lee. Yeah, that was. Um, Kirby's here. How's it Kirby, going, Kirby? What's happening? Yeah, Kirby's uh, our good buddy. Um, and Lachlan, what's up, Lachlan? How's it going, buddy? Great seeing all these guys at the festival for sure. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, Lachlan's a, a good guy, and my other buddy Don Spain. Says hi, Rich, Wes, and Gail. Finally got back to sunny Kansas from Guitar Fest. Yeah, he was yeah. going on a road trip afterwards. So. Where'd you go? Where did he go? Uh, he went up to uh, the coast. I think he stayed, went along the coast up north of San Francisco. Nice. Um, visiting some friends up there. Uh, let's see. Charles Andre in Den Denmark says, I have a Ibanez AF100. It looks strangely exactly like this guitar. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, let's see. Trying to... Don Spain and Locke, they, they had permanent places at the bar, I noticed, during Fest. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Drozdjek, uh in, in Norway. How's it going, Tony? Um, John Burkhart in western South Dakota. How's it going, John? Um, Jarn Seagard. Hello from Denmark. A couple guys from Denmark wow, today. Wow, that's huh? cool. Yeah. Did you see James McLamara just ordered a Henderson, Hendrickson amp? Did you put the code uh, Guitar College in there? And you get a discount. 
Yeah. And if you didn't, write to write to them and say, "Oh, I forgot to put my code in for a discount." Um, let's see. Lachlan said uh, the the new USA Casino is a good sub for the 330. Nice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, and so is the Eastman T64. Uh, I have one of those. I've been meaning to bring it out. Uh, uh, he did use the code. Awesome. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's good. A- every little bit helps, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, hey, Patrick Evans. Yeah. Hey, Pat. How's it going, buddy? Yeah. Thanks for joining us, you guys. Uh, let's see. Uh, Todd said he. Uh, I have a Callings version of the 330, and it is awesome. Lawler P90s. Oh, wow for the win um and then tony over in norway said uh, thanks to your advice i got two inexpensive arch tops samic lasalle and a epiphone broadway nice that's awesome yeah wow. those are good guitars the samic uh we got a couple of those that we're gonna feature pretty soon here um and then totally tuberous says uh, a few years ago i found a greco 175 clone that is really a pretty decent guitar for substantially less yeah greco they, they 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 were really trying to prove something back then and i've had a couple of those and yeah they're fine guitars so um uh john pillarella says uh <clears throat> i have a es165 i leave it at home because it feeds back so much even with foam plugs any solutions what amp are you using that that's if it's a fender amp i'll, I'll lay out it's, it's a fender amp right but you'll have to you have to get confirmation on that yeah um, let us know john what uh what amp are you running that baby through um, because you haven't, you've had several of those 165s. They're not like a feedback machine, are they? No, I've never had any problem with them. Yeah, but you know, it depends on the volume you're playing, and and if you've got the plugs, I don't know what to tell you about that. Then uh, maybe you need to get a semi hollow body guitar. Right, um, Rob asked uh is there a difference in the (laughs) es175 and the ar372 ce the eastman well they sure look the same they don't sound the same they don't feel the same but they sure look the same yeah i mean are they are they, same measurements? Yeah, it's right. I thought that's kind of what they I, were going I think, for. Right? I, I think a three seventy two is uh, has got a uh, one and three quarter inch nut width. So um, I don't know about that. Yeah, four on six uh, seven thirteen said. Um, is the tone worth the price difference versus the Eastman? I had a chance to purchase a 175 a few years back uh, for 3K, but now it seems hard to find one under 5K. Well, I got one right here under 5K. Yeah. But I tell you what, I don't think I want to ship overseas anymore. Jeez. Um, yeah, what's uh, going on with that? So a buddy of ours, Gary Salima, who's usually on the chat, uh, he bought the McCarahan right. guitar, and he's in Italy. Yeah, and it's been sitting in a warehouse somewhere. And I get a call, and it says, and I was on the, uh, um, I was talking to somebody when I got the call, and it went to the answering machine. It 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 looks like a spam number. So I get this call, and, and you can hardly understand what the guy's saying, but it's somebody from UPS in Italy, and apparently they they needed this uh, Gary's tax ID number, because God forbid if you got to make sure you tax people on customs coming in, you know? So I don't know about these headsets yours. I might go back to these other ones. Yeah. Anyway, um... So they, uh, they, they, uh, 
gave Gary the information, so I hope I hope it all works out. But it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, and it's scary too. They won't insure it. Right. And it's you know they they. So I, I didn't I didn't enjoy that at all, and so. Gil says. No more overseas shipping, and I'm I'm all for that. Yeah, it's it's so weird that it's not easier, you know. But well, you know, some some countries it is. It's it's no big deal. But even Canada shipping to Canada is pain in the ass. But, um, but according to my program thing that I use, it <clears throat> it says. That uh, you know, I don't need this certain paperwork and all that stuff. So then, when you ship it out, and then they hold it, and, and it's like, oh, he needs all this other stuff, and it's like, give me a break. So anyway, sorry, man, I'm trying these other ones. Yeah, those What's things. What's going are... on? God, these things are trashed, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, I got these new ones here, which I'm excited about. Yeah, finally. I mean, what a difference. They really do sound, and they're so much more comfortable. They sound really good. They're Sennheiser. Uh, they're about 150 bucks, which is definitely the most expensive set of headsets I've ever bought. How much were they? 150 They were on sale, though, uh, during the holidays. So I got a pretty good deal on them, and Sweetwater. I think they were like ninety bucks off or something. Um, yeah. So let's see. John uh, Pillarella says uh, depends on the studio he's at. He says he owns a Vox amp. So um, Vox would that be a tube then? Probably. Yeah. Um. Do you have your amp sitting on the right hand side of you or the left hand side of you? Because that doesn't that make a big difference. You want it on the right hand side of you. Yeah, you want it on that guitar neck side. Right. So maybe where you're sitting could be uh, something. And get away from the bass player. Yeah, get away. Um, Let's see. Gordon says, my Howard Roberts custom is the same body size as a 175. I absolutely love it. Yep. Nice. Uh, Mike uh, Brandenberger is here from North Dallas. We talked to Mike the other day about the accelerator. How's mm. it going, brother? Hopefully uh, you're doing good. Oh, yeah. I think he signed up for the um, – bought a subscription to the library and started hacking away there. So let us know how it's going, Mike. Definitely want to hear from you. Mick Mac. We haven't se seen uh, Francis in a while. What's going on, buddy? Which I got your email. I'm going to um I'm going to reply today and uh we're trying to get to, uh Francis into our mastermind group lessons, which uh it's going to be going to be really exciting. We're we're excited about it for sure. Starts on Tuesday. We got to get our butts and gear so the group lessons are are for people that have gone through the jazz guitar accelerator program and now we're going to kind of form these uh community more gr small group minded lessons um on zoom so it's going to be our first go around at that which is gonna, it's going to be fun definitely it's gonna, those things are going to fly by for sure a uh, couple days a week so yeah it's gonna be awesome you got that headset situation uh, yeah figured out these are my old ones i like them better yeah those seem very bassy and i don't know they're just tight on, on my fat head yeah um yeah these ones are so clear it's so <laughs> much clearer than those sure uh, headsets that you were using, I've never liked those. Yeah, I don't the, like them. The it. moment I got them, I was like, oh, man, I've had them for years. I mean, probably 10 years. But, man, right when I got them, I was just like, Phew. Yeah. These things, they do sound funky. They fit funky. And just having these on is a pleasure, man. Love it. These are really comfortable. 
Um, let's see. Mark Larkin says, Rich, would you have the chance to play Going Out of My Head? Love the octaves. Good air push. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's a great song. <coughs> um, so, yeah, we'll... Uh, what do you guys think about the 175? What is it? Do you think it's the most popular, the most wanted jazz guitar? I can't. You can't really. I can't. Couldn't really think of another one that's like. There's a lot of them out there. They're somewhat in the ballpark for you if you're, you know, got a, you know, you're wanting a nice arch top. They're definitely a higher priced arch top for sure. But uh, let's go over this one. Let's show this one. Okay. Yeah, so this one I I I picked up at the uh Jazz Fest and uh I I did a trade with some things for it. Um when I got it, it was um okay, so here's the deal. The guy lived on the coast. He, and he uh a lot of this metal was really um, discolored. So we got that shined up. This pot down here had to be replaced. Um, you know how the old Gibson pots have another, um, they call them pans or pots around the tone pot or the volume pot. So the pot is sealed from the air. Well, on this particular one, it, it, it had been replaced and that pot was missing. So uh, this one had been just all like uh, oxidized shut. So we had to replace this pot. Works great now. All the chrome shined up just beautifully. See, look at, look at the chrome. And you, you wouldn't have believed it when you saw it. Yeah, that thing was pretty rough for <laughs> sure. When yeah. I was checking it out at the... Uh festival after you got it and it was just like yeah it's like i was kind of shocked when i saw that how, that i that, that how, we even got it well not that i mean definitely i just didn't think it was going to be able to like that hardware does it looks almost new now yeah yeah it's, and it's so crazy also the uh yeah it, it it shined up beautifully now see it's got this one little spot right here i don't know can you zoom in there wes where the finish is kind of worn oh, yeah. off right there. Yeah, that looks that looks weird. It might be from going like it, this. I don't it know. looks like there's some like chemical reaction kind of thing going on there too. Maybe sweat or something. Yeah, probably something like that. So, um, but the guitar, it's funny. It's got an ebony. Nah, it's got to be rosewood. It's just dark rosewood foot for this bridge. And um, I did replace this cover. This cover, I couldn't get it shined up, and I had a cover uh, all, all set to go, and so I put that on. Fretware, the guy, here's the deal. I think the guy kind of left it on a music stand in his house because he didn't play it much. Oh, and I know the other thing about it, too. He said, I, I never liked the sound of it. So when I took it all apart, I realized under the bridge, somebody had put cork under the bridge to keep the bridge from going back and forth. Well, when you put cork between the bridge and the top, you're just muting the guitar. Yeah, man. You know, you know what I That's mean? That's a big kind of damper type of <laughs> yeah. material to put on there. Yeah. And put so, a piece of foam on there, like... Yeah, it's it, it it just so I don't even know if he knew it was there. I I, I don't know. But anyway, um, the fretware on this is nil. There's maybe just a little bit down here in the cowboy area, but nothing really to speak of. And this particular year, it's a seventy eight. And what I like about this year is right back here it's got a three-piece maple neck really yeah there we go so it's got the volute 
It's got the three-piece maple neck. It's got the hardware. It's just the tuners. Yeah, those the, shined up really nice too. Man. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I would not have guessed that's the same guitar because that thing, yeah, like I said, that thing was pretty. Now, it could be buffed out a little more. It looks like there's a mark right here, but it, it's it, it's in the wood, I think. It, see how it's kind of a discolored there or something? I, I don't know, but it's it's just the way the wood is. That thing's got a real pretty fretboard. It does, yeah. Yeah, like it's just got a lot of grain and detail in there and it's kind of lighter too so it uh -huh. and the thing that pops that's a nice um that's a that's a nice guitar i'm i'm oh, impressed very nice. yeah i'm impressed by how good it cleaned up for sure now this headstock is bigger than the older ones you know they went through periods of making bigger headstocks it's a little bit bigger truss rod i don't think had ever been adjusted that look, Brent, there's tons of room left on the truss rod. So I'm very pleased with this. I mean, I'm really pleased. And I took bitchin', bitchin' photos, Wesley. Yeah. Go show them the photos. Um, Richard Jenkins is wondering, how are you cleaning the hardware? Well, several ways. Um, I have a buffing wheel. You know, so I take it out to the garage, and I got a buffing wheel that I used to use for car parts, you know. You get it on there and just, you know, it's a cloth wheel, and you, you put the stuff on the wheel and buff away, and it's just a matter of minutes. It's new. Um, so you are you got the price on here for thirty nine ninety five. That's a That's a smoking deal for that guitar right there. I think so. They're like I, I forget who said it earlier, but man, they're hard to find anything under five thousand. That's a four thousand. It's in good shape too. Uh, anyway, here's you know uh, maybe we ought to change that. Here's your great photos. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, these these came out better. There's light. There's some actual light. Yeah, they're not so like artsy looking. <laughs> Mark Larkson, Larkins, you you made fun of my my photos, and Mark had to call me because he felt bad that I. Oh, see the rust on the case. Yeah. Wow. So I think the case was in the garage. The guitar was in the house, and that that case, the the latches are all oxidized, but it it kind of looks cool actually. If you clear coated it, it would look cool. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's the case is in great shape. It it hasn't been it hasn't been out of the, out of the house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, it's a good deal if you guys are uh, interested in it, man. Yeah. Four grand. I, I I would say that you're. There's no way you're gonna lose money on this baby if you if you bought it. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, and held true. on to it for five years. That thing is going to be easily over five grand for sure. Um, let's see. Um, Lachlan said he put his uh, his one seventy five back in the case and got out the Paisano four eighty. <laughs> yeah. Well. James, um, they are what they are. James McNamara, thanks for this comment here. I love it. Um, uh, have you guys considered the jazz guitar doing jazz guitar accelerator merch? That logo would look cool on a t shirt, that, isn't it? I love that logo. That's a great logo. It is. Yeah. You thanks. came up with that, didn't you? I did. I. Where did you, where did you get that speedometer? You didn't make the speedometer, did you? No, no, I you didn't. I didn't make the guitars, or I just had a bunch of elements and I put them together. Right. That's that's the way of how it works nowadays. Yeah, it's like clip art back yeah. in the day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, it takes some finessing to like make it look right, and you know, same with like the the um, 
Jazz Guitar Fest logo. I really lo- like that logo, and that was just grabbing a couple of different right, little that, pieces that of it. Come off nice. Yeah, so I'm definitely, I I love making logos and designing stuff on Canva. If you guys have never used Canva, it is it's a great program for designing anything. It's really easy. You can do some good stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, John said, thanks. I've tried positioning uh, with some success, but I appreciate the advice. I know I can't face the drums. That's for sure. Um, let's see. What what songs are you playing? This will tell how loud you are. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, <laughs> Rob says, does Kirby have a 175? He's, he, he has a lot of guitars. Let's see. John Smith says, if you get one with a really good sound, fantastic buy for the money. I think they were a bit more expensive than they used to be. Is this true? I'm sorry. What did he, what did he say? He said, I think they are a bit more expensive than they used to be. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. Way big time. Yeah. Um. And then four on six asks, um, is it on the heavier side? And I was kind of curious about that too. How heavy are the, that? It, it it it's it's just like a one seventy five. I don't know, <laughs> seven and a half pounds, something like that. Yeah, so it's not. But this one is a light, lot lighter. I can tell you that because just because it's it's got one less pickup. Right. <laughs> This isn't as heavy as my 775. Yeah, that that one's got, you know, doesn't it have like a thicker um, top? Yeah, and then like all this the stuff is plated thick more. Th- yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and it's got binding everywhere. That's yeah. the one thing that I don't. That's my only thing that I don't love about the. Uh, um, 175 is that, they don't they don't bind the head yeah stuff. yeah just if or that, the f holes if that was look bound it would it would look cooler I think well this guitar was was made to be the workhorse it was made to be affordable only 175 dollars back in the day and uh, it was made so you could you could uh, the top wouldn't uh, wouldn't uh, split if you dropped it and all that. So you know it's it's made for that. So they left off some of the frills. I'm just happy they put the inlays on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Pat Yak said uh, local guitar tech always recommends g- guitar post. I think a quarter inch or so dowel post between the top and the back helps feedback. It does. You can do that. Yeah, his father worked at Gibson Kalamazoo factory for years and taught him that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, put a post on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, John... Easier said than done. John said here, like, Elderly Instruments has a uh, 1968 ES-175 listed for 9K. That's that's wow. where we're at, people. Yeah. Well, I have a 1966 right here that I put on the website. Right. And we'll show that in a minute. But uh, let's play another song on this. Um, you know, do you want to hear this acoustically? Yeah, let's do it. So it sounds like this. Play some, play some single note stuff on it acoustically.
Nice. Um, Judy Garland uh, has a question here. Um, did you study at Berkeley like so many do? And if not, how did you get so great at jazz? Oh, nice. Thanks. No, I wanted to. I took a correspondence course from him, but that was just actually in big band arranging, <clears throat> which I, I'd never completed. Um, but that was before I was even married. And um, uh, no, I never went to Berkeley. I'm, you know, Berkeley, uh, <clears throat> I never went there. I wanted to go to GIT. I couldn't afford it. But I did end up teaching there, and that's probably better than going there. And, um, and then, uh, but yeah, I studied uh, with a lot of guys. Mitch Holder, Ted Green, first Bill Euchre, uh, Ernie Ball, guy when I was young, um, Mitch Holder, Ted Green. I taught at the same store, so got to hang out with, hang out with Ted a lot. And then when I worked for Dale Zedenik Publishing, I, I would review all the books <laughs> that would come in that, for consideration. And then I helped Jody Ario on his book, you know, and stuff. And not, you know, I didn't tell him what notes to play. I'm just saying I just read it and and helped him with the recording. So I got a little education there. And then when I went to, uh, I also studied with Charlie Shoemate, who was the vibe player with uh, George Shearing. And he's the one that really got, got me into jazz soloing. And um, <clears throat> there you have it. And then once you get to a certain point, you can teach yourself. But um, in the beginning, you you can do it a lot faster if you take some good lessons, you know, as long as they, the teacher knows what he's doing. There's always that. Yeah. Um, uh, B-flat 233 said you studied with the great Bill Euchre. Yeah. Do you know Bill? How do you know Bill? Yeah. Well, I'd be curious to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let us know about that B flat 233. Yeah, Bill Euchre was uh, my first guitar teacher. Yeah. And um, after a while, it was kind of neat. He would send me to, to, when he had recording gigs, he'd send me in to do his lessons. And so then I'd, I'd go teach at the Tarzana Ernie Ball. And I met Ernie Ball there. Chips Hoover. Um, let's see. Um, Gordon said, use autosol cutting paste to clean up the case clips. Have you ever used that? No, Auto what's it called? Autosol. Oh. No, I never have. That's like a rust remover, I assume. Yeah, well, yeah, cutting paste, he says. Um, Pat Evans said, what did you think of the Eastman FV 680 CE with the open headstock? Yeah, I took a little bit of Funky. getting used to it. Yeah. Uh, that open headstock is funny. It, the, and the way it, it, one of the strings kind of leans on one of the holes. It's kind of weird. But it, I don't know. It's all right seems to sound okay it's it's a bright guitar but it's definitely got a personality hey b flat said he took lessons at ernie ball nice in tarzana uh or in uh topanga canyon all right well let's play a tune on this mark wanted that going out of my head but we're in the d's so I make an exception for you, Mark. All right. There you go, here, Mark. Here it comes, Wes.
it. I didn't get my last lick in there. You can get it in now. <laughs> oh. Whoa, boss. Oh, yeah, man. They're ready to play. <laughs> ready. Uh, okay. Um, let's see. Uh... Four on six. Uh, I just posted the link, by the way, to the if you guys want to check out the pictures of the 175 here, 78. Um, four on six said under 4K. Wonder if I can sneak this one into the house without my wife noticing. You could probably do it. I believe in you. Four on six. You talk a second. You got it. Uh, Jim. That's a nice logo, Wes. Merch is a good idea. Coffee cups, beer mugs, wine gla- wine glasses. That would be that would be awesome. Um, yeah, some really elegant wine glasses there, but that'd be cool. Um, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, so we have another one seventy five that he's gonna bust out here in a second. The to uh, 1966 with one pickup. Um, so that should be, a, I'm curious to hear if there's a big difference in sound there. Um, Jacob, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Mission Viejo. It's probably nice and warm down there. Um, Rob Ketterer. <laughs> is traveling from Marysville, Mayville, Wisconsin to Seattle, Washington. And he's popped in for the show while he's up in Seattle. He says, I feel closer even though you're far to the south of here. <laughs> hey, you're on the west coast though, man. Yeah. Go maybe see if uh, if you're out and about, see if uh, Tim Lurch has any gigs around up there. You see? Oh, yeah. He's Tacoma. Yeah, well, right up there. Seattle also, and Tacoma uh, are like right next to each other. Roberts University. Uh, J. Roberts, Roberts, uh, you know, they're, they're G.I.T. Oh, got it. You know. Nice. Yeah. I didn't know they had a full-blown school up there. Well, it's J. Roberts School. It's not, right. not, it's not part of G.I.T. But got it. He started his own because his dad got all screwed by them, supposedly. I don't, I don't know the particulars. Eddie Davis is uh, here. Eddie, what's going on, buddy? Uh, he said they don't bind the L4 either, Wes. I wish they did also. I'm, I didn't realize that. It's, yeah. I just, I don't know. It just has, a, like, without the bound headstock, there's just something kind of missing. Well. Um, but I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize that was uh, like that on the L4. But I guess that would make makes sense um he said there's no way i would take a nine thousand guitar nine thousand dollar guitar out on a gig yeah that would be sketchy well you know what how much do you think a saxophone is those suckers are expensive man yeah i got a good story for you i got a friend he had a honda civic hatchback he had his alto tenor his flute and his soprano sax in the back and uh, he didn't unload the car that night because he was too tired woke up the next day somebody had broken into his car and stole the stereo left all the instruments (laughs) really god was he happy Hey, can you hit the um, input on the on the thing to so I can what the input on the receiver so this thing works? Whatever the computer input on the receiver. Oh, under amp here? No, 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 no. On the receiver that. Oh, this. Yeah. That should work. Let me turn it up. No, the the computer audio setting, not the. Oh, oh, not the. Oh, okay. How's that? Ever hang around the gymnasium? <laughs> <laughs> and turn it up. 
<laughs> um, let's see. Uh, so B flat two thirty uh, two thirty three says uh, he did take lessons with Bill Euchre for a little while at Tarzana. Really? Uh huh. Yeah. How'd you like Bill? I mean, he was the he was my hero. Yep, we brought him out to Thousand Oaks for our, well, after years of nobody ever knowing what happened to him. And uh, honored him because he taught everybody in that town. It was a real touching thing. And he was very happy. Rob uh, Ketterer says, have you heard from Jay Roberts lately? He seems to have dropped off of YouTube. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I haven't heard from him. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. He's probably... He's probably uh, busy. Yeah, busy as heck up there. You know, uh, YouTube promises a lot, delivers little. Uh, Gordon, uh, or sorry, uh, Curtis Chavez uh, was curious, what's your favorite jazz guitar pickup of all time? Shaller. Got it. Or, like or the HRWs, Howard Rendell Wall, which are an altered shallower pickup. I like those. I like I like the uh, Seth Lovers, too, you know. I like probably those are the three right there. Nice. Yeah. Um, what's what are the pickups in those things? Or just Gibson? The Gibson pickups. This this is a '66, <laughs> and it <clears throat> has has been shot over with overspray, but it's not too gaudy, and not too. It feels good, and the neck feels fantastic. And I'm sure this is a replacement trick tailpiece. Um, the pick pickup is like a PAF repo. From Gibson, it's got that, I don't know if it's an authentic pickup, you know, patented number pickup, or the real deal, or or a reissue, I don't know, because the way they make them now, you know, I, I can't tell. And um, it's original tuners, and the frets are original, no, it's been, yeah, I think it's been refretted. Um, but it's got the 916 nut width, which I like. It's got a sweet little sound, doesn't it? Yeah, that thing does sound good. Um, Danielle uh, asked, uh, do you do you play the intro for all the things you are? Bass player last night declined the opportunity to do it. I don't. No. That thing? I don't, nah. Got it. And then Gordon said, uh, if you're in the D's, can you play uh, Dave's Shadow of Your Smile? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's play... Um, What's on the list here? Uh, um, wait a minute, I gotta go back. Go back, young man. Todd Richmond says uh, he regularly li regularly gigs with a twelve thousand dollar bass. Wow! And bought them to gig and play with them, and he has musical instrument insurance to cover them. Have you ever had insurance on any of your guitars? No. Where do you get the policy for that? Just anywhere? Yeah, there's special companies that do that. Got it. State Farm. <laughs> huh. I hope not. All right, here's do nothing here, here for me. Got That's it. a D.
Okay, yeah. So, Wes, you work in the, the, the board here. If you uh, feel so inclined, please send Wes a tip because he does work hard putting this show together. And uh, I know he really appreciates it in the past. When oh, you yeah. Have yeah, you guys it. are really awesome for tipping me in. Yeah, it's a lot of work getting this show oh, on the uh, boy, on the air. Boy. Yeah, he's not used to that hard work. Yeah, I know. I learned it from you. From my work ethic God. got it from yeah. you. Um, but no, it, it's fun. I love I love doing this show for sure. It's hard college. Yeah, I want to make it work. I want to get it better. Like I want to I want to name the show and have an intro and God, that's. A, I need to spend like a full week on stuff just for the show, which would make it a lot better, I think. Definitely some graphics. And yeah. Yeah. Um, let's 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 look at this guitar real close. Okay. Because I put it up on the website too. Yeah, Rodney. Um, I think it was Rod Rodney Vintage Rod One Seven Five. That's got to be Rodney. He said he played that at the Guitar Fest and loves the pencil neck on it. You pencil neck geek. Remember him, Freddie Blassie said that. Yeah, there it is. There, it, as you can see, it's got checking. Uh, it has been oversprayed with some lacquer, and it sealed it up. It hasn't been. Yeah, the thing's glossy, man. Yeah. Um, the binding on it's funny how how yellow the binding has gotten on on the neck. I mean, on the body. But on the neck, not so much. I don't know if this has been replaced. I don't think so. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's quite pretty. Yeah, it is. And here's the, the. Uh, top there, and it's got that tuner hanging off it, and there's the back of it. So the neck has got no no little. You can see where it kind of where it has been, you know, varnished over. Right. So you can see where it's been. Done. So, talk about the um. That one doesn't have a three-piece neck. No, it's mahogany. So, did they only make the three-piece neck in certain years, or what? How, yeah, how does that I, work? I, I don't know. They go back and forth on that. Yeah, the, in the seventies, they started doing that. I think. I, I'm no authority on that. So, but yeah, I've seen more in the the seventies with the three-piece neck, because the necks, uh, you know, you knock it over and the neck, you know, the head sock breaks off. So um, they started doing that. Um, putting the volute in and then with the uh, three-piece neck as well so so is the neck much different than the other one it's skinnier skinnier neck or well no what's that, the story there it maybe is a little bit this way yeah a little thinner but definitely thinner this way and yeah. do you, which one do you like better? I like the thinner one. I, I've been, I've been, just because my hands feel, it feels better. So I, I don't know, it just feels a little easier. And I've got this thing playing so low, it's crazy. And I, did li lift the pickup off the top on this as well as on this too and uh, so both have the pickups lifted off with the washer and I reversed the uh, the uh, pick guard or the uh, pickup ring on this and on this on the neck pickup it's a fact it's so a fact. is this one on the site too yeah I just put it on there this morning. Go look at the. There you go. Go look at the thing there. Check it out, man. Are you gonna do that? Yeah. Sorry. Look at those beautiful. So pictures. wait, wait. You said earlier that Mark called you to 
tell you that the pictures weren't that bad. That were he liked them. <clears throat> he said those pictures are good. You're, <laughs> you're complaining about them all the time. You just uh, got to have something to complain about. Mark's a great guy. It's because I did it. That's why you complain. Yeah. No, that's just the one. One of them. They're getting better. One. There's. There was one guitar where it was just well, really dark, and it looked like. Well, there is a guitar on there that's very dark. Go, go, check out that ES three fifty on there. Um. Okay. Here, hold on. Oh yeah, here we go. Yes. Yeah, that's a little. The uh, it looks like you turned the light on finally. There, open the door. That's a cool guitar. Oh yeah, very very cool. Oh, we'll feature that one of these days. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. Um, I'll put the link in there uh, in the chat here so you can check this one out. So this one you have listed at six fifty nine ninety five. Um, so is that are are the one pickup versions like more rare? Uh, yeah, yeah. They they made. I mean, that one's fewer. obviously 12 years older, too, and in really good shape. Well, even if you look at uh, ES-175s uh, from the 60s, uh, you'll see there's more Ds, one, the 175Ds, which means dual pickup. Is this on? Coming through the mic? I mean, yeah. Okay. This, the action could come down here more, but I don't want to mess with it right now. Yeah. Um, let's just take a uh, peek here at Reverb and see what, what the prices are for some other ones. Yeah, do uh, that. Um, guess. <clears throat> are you... Are you, what I'm are you I have to type. I mean, I've got to put it in there. Um, let's see. Whoops. Yeah, see, like this one right here. That's ten grand for that one. What year is that? Uh, Doesn't sixty-one. Say. Yeah, see, now those those might have original PAFs. I doubt it, though. You better you have to look at the description. Um, because those original PAFs, they want a fortune for those stupid things. Right. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Patent pending. Yeah, it says equipped with 80s or 90s Gibson reissue. Oh, PAF. okay. Well, see, see, that's not the that's not an original deal, you know. So. Yeah, that's a high price right there. That seems to be yeah. I mean. Uh, 57. That's not the. That's not a bad deal for this guy. No, I didn't see that before. That's down in Burbank. Yeah, that's sweet. Wait a minute, uh, huh, fifty-seven. Wow, oh, that's pretty good. Imperial vintage guitars at Sherman Oaks. Hmm. Huh. Here you go, Jim. Get down there and get this thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, late 60s. So you had 62 up there? So, like, why? Yeah, this one? One, two, the last one over. There, look, click on that. Holy crap. 16 grand for that? That's what I had, a 62 with the original pickups. Wow. That just is astronomical. That though. thing's beautiful, though, for being a 62. It is. Uh, that, now, that tailpiece. No, yeah, is that original? I mean, the tailpiece looks it, but the pickup covers, you'd have to research that. Because hmm. they're, they're, it had nickel pickup covers. And those are too shiny. Two original PAFs in there. I wonder if they replaced the pickup top covers. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that's a, God. That's a lot. Dang. Yeah. So they're yeah they're they're out there all Look over the map. Good God, yeah, they're all over. 
yeah so like gosh some of them are pretty good price and then other ones are just so crazy expensive what where are people now, try to find find one with only one pickup um yeah i mean would i type that in or just well if what, what did you i just type here, in here's one okay 64 that's that looks just about like this one 75 wow that is i got this one too cheap don't i uh i don't know okay see if that's the original pickup that can't be though let's see this guitar comes with a case doesn't say well that would be uh bill's bill. music and Massachusetts, huh? That's important information. Yeah, he doesn't have much of a description on there at all. So, yep. Anyway. And, and it, oh well. Okay. Well. Look away, quick. Look away. <laughs> so you know we were in the seas, and I forgot to play Caliente. Gotcha. That's my song, and it's you'll recognize it. Should we play it? Sure. Are you ready? Yeah. Thank you. 
that uh that has some major austin powers vibes i always think of that when i hear that song it just screams austin powers for some reason it's yeah, like baby <laughs> the ninja turtles yeah i got it um Ke <clears throat> kelly asked uh kelly green says um I have a 68 ES-175. I really love it, but I'm not sure how much of it is all original. Could I send you pics? Do you have any tips for how to like spot how it's if it's original or, or not to help him out? You know, <clears throat> it's so hard to tell, really. Uh, <clears throat> the tailpiece, to, to be honest, who cares? I, I don't care if it's original or not. Um, the only thing I would care about is maybe the pots. If you look in, in there, the pots and the wiring, maybe, and the pickups. Um, you know, frets, if they're original, I hope they're not. <laughs> you know, and the tuners, I hope they're not. Because uh, who cares? Uh, to me, it... it Modern day tuners are so much better. And I was talking with Greg Delordo about this, uh, uh, and I bought some new tuners for my L5. He said, I remember, you know, back in the day that the tuners were so, the, the uh, gear ratio was so, you could never get the ding thing in tune because just the bad gear ratio. So now they, the tuners nowadays are so much better. Who can, does it matter if the switch is original or not? I don't give a crap about that. I'd rather have a new one. And it's clean. So I would say look in the F-holes. If you can see that the F-holes have pots on them, and big tin cans around the, the, uh, the uh, controls, the volume pots, then you you'll, can probably assume that those are original. You have to take the pickup out, take a look at the back of it, and see what it says. Um, and then do your research on YouTube. Uh, bridges wear out, you know. Um, sometimes, you know, it, it cracks me up. Okay, here, here's, I just bought a 68, 175. <clears throat> Completely stripped. No, no parts on it at all. And I was going to show it today, except I gave it to uh, my friend, uh, Nate, who's been doing some work for me to uh, um, to rewire it with some new pots. You know, so personally, I don't, I don't care about that. Now, the wood is a different story. You know, the wood, you figure, you, <clears throat> wood that's been sitting around for 60 or 70 years, you know, it's aged a little bit. You know, it's got a different sound to it. The the lacquer has, you know, kind of dried up and flaked off and cracked and everything. So <clears throat> the wood is going to be a different story. <clears throat> so I like a guitar that's functional, really functional. You know, it, it's nice to have an old one, but I remember I had a friend, he was looking for an old L5, and he said... Or just an old vintage guitar. And he said, man, I played them all. And I thought they all played like crap. And, uh, and then I just decided to buy a Yamaha. <laughs> I forget what one. It was a Yamaha. And I said, I like that better. So he was a pretty knowledgeable guy, too. But, of course, that's before the, all these vintage, the vintage stuff really took hold. Nice. Um, so you you took that you gave that guitar to Nate and he's already gonna wire it up. Yeah. Oh bummer, man. I wanted to we show that thing or do a like we should have done a quick video on it or something. I didn't know you were oh. getting because that was interesting. When I walked in, I was like, "What the heck is this? Why the heck did you buy this?" <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I and I definitely was saying it'll be a year before that thing's planned. So I'm still sticking by that. 
that estimate. Why don't you put your money where your mouth is? I, I, because people just <laughs> let you see. I bet you, yeah. Okay, you bet me. Good. How yeah. much? Friendly gentleman's bet. <laughs> Smell. Yeah. Oh, that would be me. I've been swimming in raw sewage. Yeah, Richard Bishop wanted me to play some sound bites. So oh, you gotta I gotta yeah. It's like I picked the wrong week to put on Fetamix. <laughs> the wrong week what? To quit and amphetamines. <laughs> um so let's see. I'm there's a lot of comments. Uh, Danielle Emberly, I love this comment. She said she talked to a guy who left a Super 400 in a restaurant lobby, went back 20 min- minutes later, and it was gone. Could you imagine that? Well, like holy crap. Yeah, Ron Anthony. When he was living, where did he live? It was Pittsburgh or something like that? Or- Anyway, when he was younger, he had a D'Angelico, right? It was a 59 D'Angelico, and he left it on his front porch. And when he finally realized, oh, no, it, it was gone. Well, he found it a year or two later at a pawn shop and uh, was able to get it back. Wow. Yeah, but, man, can that, you believe that? Talk about your heart just, like, sinking I mean, not only just like, God, it just feels so, whenever, when you get anything stolen from you, that feeling is just like, God, you just feel so ripped off and you're like, man, I want to kill that person that stole it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then not to mention it being a, God, that's super 400 and man, yeah, I would just be like, oh man, that's just, that's going um, tears. You'd be, I'd be crying. Uh, Mick Mac said, "There's a nice song called Con Alma from oh, Dizzy yeah. Gillespie. Do yeah, you have I, a version of it?" I, 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 I used to. I worked out that tune a few years ago, and I, I have forgotten how it goes. I, I, I'll, I'll have to work it up. Yeah. I love that song. It's it's nice, beautiful tune. Um, let's see. Uh, question for you from Jacob. Uh, I heard on a YouTube jazz channel recently that the host really dislikes P90s because of the terrible hum they produce. Instead, she prefer, prefers humbuckers, which were designed to reduce the hum. Yep. What do you what What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's true. I mean, the uh, especially like you get in a room. Um, I remember having a, a P90 on a uh, Super 400, actually, I think it was. And I had it at a gig, and the room lighting was so intense, and it was saying hum like crazy. Yeah, so it, it's annoying as can be. So the newer P90s, they make them so they don't do that. But the uh, old ones, yeah, they're notorious for that. So uh, you gotta be careful with those. Um, Jim Burkhart over in South Dakota has an interesting uh, tidbit here. He said he just got an email from D'Angelico with a link to your demo. Really? Yeah, that's awesome. What's the link? I haven't posted the link on the message board. I'd like to see it. I don't think that people, you can't. Post oh, you can't post there. it. Oh. But yeah, man, uh, John, maybe you could forward, can you forward us that email? That'd be awesome. Um, oh, yeah, that, there you go. Yeah, here, I'm going to put my email in the uh, chat here. If you could forward that to me, that would be awesome. I wanted to see this. Um, there you go. Severson.west at gmail.com. You guys can all email me. So next week we're going to uh, we're going to feature the D'Angelico style B, right? Yeah, we're going to do a D'Armond pickup shootout. Yeah, so we've got that and an artist award and a 1944 L4 with a D'Armond. Have I I I don't remember seeing that L4 with that. Have you? Have we done something with that, or is that recent? Or 
No, we have. I don't think we've ever done anything with that. Yeah, we should do something on that as well. So I don't know. We might yeah. have to hold that baby Oof. and just do the the two. Just do the two, yeah. Cause that's a that's a 1944 man. That's that's awesome. They're they they're not just laying around. That's for sure. No, they're not. Um, let's see. Uh, they were talking about music, musical instrument insurance, uh, Clarion and Music Pro. Oh yeah. Um, and then uh, Todd also said that uh, your homeowner's policy won't cover your guitar if you gig with it. Right. Like, how are they supposed to know that? Well, if you put your, <laughs> I don't know. You got to lie, I guess. I don't know. Right. Huh. Um, oh, sweet. Thanks, John. He just emailed it to me. That was, that was fast. That was awesome. Let's check this out. Here we go. That that doesn't look like Right? Me. You're rocking shades now. Oh, that guitar. Oh. Oh, yeah. This That's the... Uh, the SS or yeah the premiere. premiere yeah sweet oh nice cool man that's great it's a wiener yeah that, that was cool that's a cool guitar I know you you seem to confiscate it yeah I won't I don't want to mess around with that thing um let's see back to the message board here um but uh so Todd said he's got uh where did that go? Sorry. Anyway, I don't know. Oh, John Smith here. He's got an interesting... He says, I love the 30s. I have a 1931-50 with a Charlie Christian pickup. It seems to pick up the electric clock and other electrical interference. Yeah. Yeah, that's the truth. Um, Gordon uh, is asking, if you can you show the back of that uh, that thing? This one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, no, he was talking about the '66. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. Well, I can show that. Yeah. All right, do it. All right, ready? Here we go. I thought I did. Yeah, that's pretty. I didn't. It's, it, I've been using it to teach with, and, and I haven't been, you know, I haven't been cleaning it. Uh, need to needs a good clean. Um, Carlos Campos, um, I think he's down in Brazil, um, but he uh, asked, "Hey, will you talk about your octaves technique?" Sure, sure. So, I mean, I like to use my thumb. And so I use, for the uh, E string, I use those two fingers, and for the A string, and for this string, I use those fingers. So you have to say to yourself, which note, which, which finger is going to be selecting the target note? It's funny, I was just doing this with Tom Rotella. Tom had a class on this. And he says he uses his little finger as far as this is this is a G. So he's playing looking at this. I play look at that looking at this. So if you look at what an octave is, you know, you've got this, these other notes trailing behind. And you're just focusing on this. So that's how I like to do it. So you learn to play things with one finger. There's a major seven arpeggio. Here's a minor major seven. Okay, here's an augmented. Okay, then learn to play it. And then learn to play your scales. And then, 
I, you're muting that note as well as all these others. Okay. So I'm strumming all the strings. So, so I, whatever I want to play, whatever you think about playing. play it first with play with one finger and then the, add those fingers later. I think that's the fastest way to learn. I have a bunch of lessons on that. Yeah, um, we added those to the chat, the octave uh, series. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, it would be good for you there, Carlos. Uh, it takes a lot of practice, I would imagine. It looks hard. Uh-huh. Um, Let's see. Um, if I missed your question, can you repost it? I'm just, I've gotten so far behind on this chat for sure. But um, Ov Stalin, uh, Ov Stalin says, can't see Schaller humbucking for sale so often. I think I will change to Lawler Low Wind Imperial, replace for epi Epiphone. Don't know about the difference. Well, you know, if, um, correct me if I'm, Wrong, Rob. Uh, uh, is Rob still on the chat here? Probably. I I think the lower the the output of it, the more trouble you're going to get. So if your guitar is already already very troubly, I think go for a higher output. Um, I could be wrong, but that's what I seem to be remembering. It's hard to remember all this stuff. Right. Yeah, Jim Hall had a 175. He had an L4, uh, L5, and he hated it. It was the story I heard, probably because of the feedback or whatever, but he just didn't like it. And again, an L5 sometimes don't sound good because you can't hear the overall, in a band situation, you can't hear the overall nuances of the guitar. It has to be a, a concealed or... A, tight situation, studio situation or something. Right. Dan Anthony said, uh, he, I want the holy grail jazz guitar, but I hear L5s are too big for some people. I need a really nice Gibson arch top. Well, you can go with uh, the L4 or, or, an L, or one of these. The 775, if you can find one, those are sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Take a look at the at these ones, Dan. These are good deal, especially the one that he's using right now. I mean, yeah. four grand. As we looked at earlier on Reverb, it's one of the lower priced uh, ones on there. Um, let's see. Um, Fish Bite Catch. Has anyone ever played on a Halo custom arch top four? I was going to try to order one, but they discontinued the line of arches. Yeah, doesn't Halo. ring a bell. Yeah. Um, and then Roberto uh, Gianetto said, I own a Steve Howe signature ES-175. What do you think of this version of the guitar? Yeah, I've never played one, so I have no opinion. What What's the difference? Do you know? I don't. I don't know. Oh, Rob says higher output, more mid range. Lower output, more chime. Huh. Sour cream and chime. Well, that's interesting. Okay. So 
So I, I you know, it, I, I suppose it's got to fit the guitar. Um, so it, I was, Joel says, read what Joel says here, Wes. Uh, let's see. Um, I was told by Mark Campoloni, if you are a finger picker, the low wine pickup would work for you better than full output or mm. finger picker. Yeah. They like that nice, bright sound, you know? Right. So. Yeah. I mean, gosh, there's so many people on here that are talking about their um, 175. So, I mean, it's definitely got to be the most po I've never seen so many people say, oh, my 175. I yeah. Got, oh, my 175. That's, that's crazy for sure. Yeah, you got to have it in your arsenal. Yeah, that's what Shaft 9000 said earlier was like, eh, sooner or later, if you're a jazz player, you're going to have a 175. Um, right. Yeah. Um, John Smith also asked, uh, how do you like the 175s after 2000 till they stopped production? Have you played any of them? You've, you've had it. Didn't you have a newer one? I think we've had some of those and... Um, yeah, I, I thought they were nice. They were nice, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I had no problem with them. What was what year was the one that you sold to Joel? Didn't he, he buy that blonde one? Yeah, that was in 89, I think, Joel. Is that right? Huh. With, it, it was all, all mahogany, too, with the spruce top, which is a nice, nice combo. Shall we play another song? Sure. Here's a... Um, wait a minute. Uh, we're in the D's. What, what happened to that song? <laughs> Here's Don't Get Around Much. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, I, I found, I, I wanted to show <clears throat> this, um, here's, here's what you got. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I was saying. This thing won't be playing for a year. And Paul P man said, we'll have to bet for a friendly bet is usually a $1 wager. $1. $1. But yeah, I'm. I walked in and I saw this thing and I was like, "What the heck? Like, what are you gonna do with that?" And uh, it was expensive too. I was like, Sheesh, "Man, um, pretty cool though." The brown, I definitely like that. It definitely looks different for sure. But uh, I don't know. He's got so many guitars in there that he's always working on, and I just don't see this one coming coming together in a year but hey i'm basically just doing that to try to get it done quicker so hopefully i can keep egging them on but did that it came with a case too yeah oh that's cool yeah so these guys they dismantle guitars you know like they're going uh a wrecking yard you know except you you don't take a new or not a new car, but a functioning car, and dismantle it. I guess you do if you, the parts are worth a lot. I don't know. So apparently the parts are worth more than the guitar with the parts. Right. In this case. So that's fine with me. I'll, I'll put on, I'm, I'm, it's like Gail said, well, you put everything on there that you like and then play it, you know. But Yeah. You know, may I play it for a while and then I'll throw it, throw it up on the web page or something. Yeah, um, let's see. There's another question here. Um, a while back, you were at the Austin show and played a guitar by Texas Luthier Red and Tory Guitars. You seem to be pleased with it, but is it worth the four to five k that was being asked? Where was that? Where? In doubt? It must have been in Nashville. I think, yeah. Let me see if I can dig that video up real quick. But, um, yeah, remember we it did... It was in Austin, yeah. Yeah, it was definitely Nashville. Remember we did that um, with uh, that little quick video feature thing we did with, uh, what's his name, Denny? Yeah. Is that what he was playing? Yeah, I think that's... It was like his buddies or something. Um, hold on, I'm trying to find it. I don't know if I'll be able to, but... But they were... Uh, yeah, they were cool cool guitars for sure. Um, it, it was a while back, so... Someone asked if you could play uh, Scrapple from the Apple. You know, maybe... Not doing I feel like I'm not doing so hot today. Um man, I can't find this thing. This is not a good DV. <laughs> Come on, Wes. You should know better. Get your shit together, crying out loud. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank you. My mother thanks you. My father thanks you. My sister, my um, dog. So I was able to kids. find the, the video. Oh, yeah? So remember this thing, the little jazzer? Oh, I forgot about that. That's right. Yeah. That was a cool guitar for it sure. It was, yeah. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say definitely. Well, it's got a, it had a, uh, bar pickup on it right yeah it was beautiful too mm -hmm. a skinny thing though yeah it was but uh it sounded good for sure um i don't have this hooked up to play sound right now or else i would but um it's on youtube they can they could check it out yeah for Just sure see what it says it's the, definitely uh um little jazzer lj right but yeah it was cool i would say it's definitely worth the four or five thousand you know it's handmade like joel said anything made by a quality luthier handmade is definitely going to be 
in you that know, ballpark. Yeah, in, yeah, and and not only that, it's the price of handmade instruments, uh, like the Tyler Wells. Those are those are up there, you know, and the Sun Tags. Uh, I mean, they're expensive. It, you figure how many hours it takes to make one, right? And um, I think I, one guy said two hundred hours, which is gosh, that's only five weeks, right? Forty hours a week. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. There was a couple questions. Not to mention the skill and the artistry that it takes to make one. People just don't can't make a guitar. Like a friend of mine used to say, anybody who's got a wood shop in his garage thinks they can make a guitar. And, uh, but man, there's so much time and uh, thought and, and experience that goes into it. So, um, a couple of questions here from Josh uh, Nicholson. He asked this earlier um, Do you care much for steel frets on the newer boxes? You know, I I like the nickel. I think nickel sounds better. It sounds warmer. I, am I wrong? You know, like the, I like the nickel silver, but I do not I do not like the stainless steel frets. Do not like them. And if you ever want to go get a fret level, they're harder than hell to file down. And uh, so, to answer your question, I don't like them. Um, and then he also asked uh, if you've ever heard of pitch class inversions, Noel Johnston's analysis on mirroring the modes. No, never heard of it. Sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, let's see. Go <laughs> go back to the airborne. <laughs> What? The airborne boogie boarder. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, here you go. Yeah, man, I want to do that one day. It's hard. Hard to get enough speed to get that high out of the air on a wave, let me tell you. But, going to do it. Uh, Richard Bishop uh, Pleck, what do you think of it? We kind of talked about that last week, but you're you're a fan of it, right? Yes. And somebody had said that it all depends on the operator. It just, I guess, doesn't. Right. And then Richard uh, Bishop also asked earlier, how do you like working with sax players? I love to mimic their scale runs. Even the sax errors make a cool, make cool sounds character. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like working with sax players. Sure. Yeah, there was that one guy you played with at Puffers a while back. Yeah, that, that Sam Franklin, that guy was smoking. Yeah, he's a young guy too. Yeah, man, he's yeah, he's really good. I was really thoroughly impressed by that guy. Yeah, um, that was a good band. There is a video of it on YouTube, on our channel as yeah. well. But yeah, yeah, I was like, dang. And then yeah, he looked. He looks like he's twenty five. Yeah, I think he said he was. I can't remember. He was 27. Um, Roberto uh, asked, can you tell me what value you set the volume and tone knobs at? Well, right now they're on 10 because, they, well, the tone's backed off a hair. Just because I, I don't think, you know, I'd like to back this off a hair. But it's like I can't get enough volume, so it's wide open at this point. Yeah. Got it. Well, if anyone has any other questions, uh, get them in now. Otherwise, uh, we'll probably need to start wrapping this up. Yeah, it's time to move on down the road. I want to thank everybody for watching today. That's really great. One time I, th I looked up and there was 105 viewers. 
That's pretty good, isn't it? Hello? Wes? No? Wait, what? At one time, there was 105 concurrent viewers. Yeah, I think we got up to 110 for a little while. Yeah, Todd, that is some serious air. I've spent plenty of time going the opposite direction and bouncing off reefs back in the day. Yeah, that hurts. Uh, uh, that reef will get you. Oh, gosh. But, man, it's fun. I love bouncing around. I need to get out, too. I haven't gone in a few months, so definitely on my Aren't list. Aren't you going to Ecuador again? <laughs> no, to Nicaragua at Nicaragua. some point. Okay. Oh, good. Um, Pat Matheny oh. used an old toothbrush to help keep his strap attached to his 175. If I used one, would it improve my solos? Yes. Definitely put that on Gordon. <laughs> Definitely. And send us a picture of it. I don't, I'm trying to visualize that. How would you use a toothbrush to... Hmm. Well, some guys, you know, they, they brush their teeth a lot, you know, after every meal. Like at camp, you know, when you yeah. go in there and the bathroom and a couple of guys are in there brushing their teeth. And then I'm like, oh. Speaking of camp, uh, Kirby asked, is the camp sheet music out yet? No, I'm sorry, it's not. I've got to get that done this weekend. But at least we talked about the intros and endings with Todd. So it's yeah. getting there, getting close. And we've, we've been really filling up on this. There still is room. Yeah, so if you guys are interested in going to the Yosemite Guitar and Bass Jazz Workshop, yeah, get here. I'll put the link in the uh, chat here. It's uh, going to be a good time. All jazz guitar all the time. All right, well, um, yeah. I'm hungry. All right, well, let's, well, we'll see you later, guys. Thank you, Gail, for doing all that stuff, and Wes, you too. Thanks, guys. Okay, see you next week. Now we're, did we tell them what we're going to do next week? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, adios. Hope you have a